Today we have the Open EVSC Advanced Series 48 Amp Electric Car Charger. We're going to give it a complete review. By complete review, I mean we're going to stick this thing in a freezer for 14 hours to see just how well the cable performs in cold weather. We're going to also take a close look at the cable and the connector. We're going to compare it to some of the most popular charging stations on the market today to see how this thing holds up. We're also going to review all of its features, then put it to the test of our Charger Raider point-based rating system. At the end, I'm going to offer a five-star rating so you'll know if this is the right charging station for you. But first, please click the subscribe button below, tap that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. The Open EVSE comes in a 40 amp unit, which costs $499, a 48 amp unit, which we have here, that costs $549. It's also available in a 32 amp unit for the European market. And that comes with a different connector. It's the Type 2 Menix connector. So it is available for European customers also, even though we generally focus here on US-based EVSE, I like to mention that Open EVSE is available for European customers with the proper connector attached to it. Here in the US, all the charging stations, except those made by Tesla, use the J1772 connector because that's the industry standard here in North America. Um, you can also buy a kit and put this together. Open EVSE sells this as a kit with all of the parts and you can just put it together yourself. I actually think that's how the company started years ago, um, building these, putting together these kits and letting people build their own uh, charging stations, which I think that's the name, Open EVSE, because it's open sourced and you can put it together yourself. Uh, I, th I think that's how the company started, but in any event, you can still do that if you want. You'll save $50 if you buy the 40 amp unit and you save $70 if you buy the 48 amp unit. So. It's a significant savings and I'd imagine a lot of people actually would get some enjoyment out of putting their EV charger together. So you got a little weekend project and you can save some money. Now the Open EVSC is honestly the smallest, lightest 48 amp charger available today. In fact, when I received it, I didn't think that the whole unit was in the box. I thought maybe they were shipping me the cable separately because the box is so small compared to the boxes that I received from ChargePoint and Clipper Creek and NLX and Grizzly, all these chargers you see on the wall behind me come in much larger boxes. And this came in this tiny little box and it was so light, I really didn't even think it was in there, but it was. It's such a small unit and it has a very thin light cable. So you put that together and it's very compact and it can get shipped in a small box. Fooled me, I didn't think it was all in there, but it was. Um, the opening VSC is also very easy to install. There's four screws, two on the bottom of the unit and two on the top of the unit. You simply screw it into the wall. As always, I recommend you use um, anchors or if you can buy, if you can find studs in the wall, it's always the best. You want these things mounted very securely to your wall. Even though this one doesn't have uh, integrated cable management and, and a connector holster, which would make the unit um, have more of a pull on the wall, more weight on it. This has a remote uh, uh, connector holster, it still needs to be attached strongly uh, on the wall. Um, talking about the connector holster, uh, the opening VSC does come with a small uh, remote connector holster that you screw on the wall. You can honestly put it wherever you want. It doesn't have to be right next to the unit. Some people like that because they can mount it uh, on, the, on a different wall of the garage other than where the main unit is located. And they can kind of put it right next to where their car charge point is, charge port is so you can literally just you know plug the thing in pull the car in you take it off the wall and pop it into the car uh, I personally tend to like integrated connector holsters and cable management where they're built into the main unit and then the, the companies can also supply a remote connector holster a little plastic one if they want to that's an as an added bonus but the reason why I like the integrated holsters is many of them are backlit like the charge point home and the flow uh, home Th those units have LEDs that are backlit, so if the garage is dark, if mounted outside, you can easily find the connector holster, 
just a little bit of a better design for me. Now the Open EVSC's connector holster, as far as being a remote plastic one, it's not bad. It's not gonna get it any extra points in our charger radius system, but it's also not gonna get penalized because it works well. And the lip on the top of the connector holster is tall enough to hold the cable. It won't fall off if you wrap it up a couple of times. Some of them have little tabs. And what happens is if you roll the connector, the cable up more than once, the cable will fall over the top of the connector holster. Doesn't happen here with the open EVSC. The tab is tall enough to hold the cable in place. Okay, now let's take a look at the open EVSC's cable and connector as compared to three competitors. Now we have the Tesla wall connector here, the NL Juice Box 48, and the ChargePoint Home Flex. Now it's important to note that all of these units can deliver 48 amps. You need to be able to compare the same power levels of the units to make it a fair comparison. If these were only to be able to deliver say 16 amps or 24 amps, then they'd have an unfair advantage because they can make their cables thinner and easier to bend. All of these can deliver 48 amps with the exception of the charge point home, that can actually deliver 50 amps not really much of a difference and not really an advantage because there are no electric vehicles sold today that can accept more than 48 amps. So these all will charge every electric vehicle made today at their maximum charge rate. Let's first take a look at open EVSC. So they've got a connector that is feels good in your hand. I like the fact that it has some ridges along the bottom for your fingers to fit in. That's important to be able to get a nice grip on it, doesn't slip out of your hand, drop on the ground. There's also some ridges on the side, it's hard for you to maybe see that on the video, that really helps you hold on to the connector. It's, this connector is not gonna slip out of your hands. It also comes with a plastic rubberized cap that if you don't holster the connector in the supplied connector holster that goes on the wall, if you're just draping it over something, you put this on and it protects the connector from dust, dirt, grime, any type of moisture. You don't want to leave your connector exposed to the elements. In the short term, it probably wouldn't be a problem. Over time, those pins are going to get fouled. They're going to rust. There's going to be some kind of an issue in there and it's going to fail. So either keep your connector holstered in a connector holster or with a plastic cover like this if you want it to last a long time. Now the cable on the open EVSC is thin. It's one of the thinnest cables available today. It's pretty much the same thickness as the Tesla wall connector, but they're two of the thinnest cables that are available on high powered electric vehicle chargers that I know of. Uh, it bends very well at room temperature. We'll see how it does later on in the deep freeze cable test. When we freeze this unit, it might be a different story, but for now it, it's very pliable, feels good. It's kind of rubberized. Uh, the connector feels good in your hand. I like the open EVSC's cable and connector combination. I think it's one of the better combinations on the market. Okay, next up, let's take a look at the ChargePoint Home Flex. Now, ChargePoint has their own connector that they made themselves, and it is great. It is super heavy duty. It's rubberized. It has a really good grip on it. It just feels like real quality. Their cable is also probably the best cable available today on any electric car charger. It's a little bit thicker than the open EVSCs and the Tesla wall connectors. It's not as thick as the NLX juice boxes, but it's, it's, it's probably average thickness for the chargers that I see today with the open EVSC and Tesla's wall connector being thinner and the NLX juice box cable being thicker than the average cable. And this cable performed excellently in our cable deep freeze charger test, probably the best of any that we've tested so far. So ChargePoint really nailed it with their cable and their connector. Um, it's probably the best combo available today on, on any charger, but the open EVSCs is pretty good. Next up, the NLX juice box. Now NLX uses the ITT connector, which is a very popular connector. Many brands use it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it, it, it works, uh, it's durable, you're not gonna have any problems with this. I'm just not a fan with how it, really how it feels in your hand. I think some of the other companies that um, have different solutions have better options. Also, the NLX juice box cable is very thick and plasticky. It's not very rubberized. It did very poorly in our cable deep freeze test. And even at room temperature, it's kind of like very stiff. Um, 
I'm not a fan of the, the NLX uh, juice boxes cable. I love the charger. I think the unit's a great unit, but the cable is very poor. It's, it's one of the worst cables available on the market today. And if you live in a cold weather area where this is mounted outside, it is not a recommended unit. We recommend the NLX juice box for pretty much any other climate, but very cold climate where you're gonna have the charger mounted outside. Next up is the Tesla wall connector. Now you can see the cable is about as thin as the open EVSEs. Um, it's even a little bit more rubbery than open EVSEs, a little bit more bendable. We haven't done the cable deep freeze test on this yet, so don't know how it performs in cold weather. Um, but one thing you will notice is, look here, there's a different connector on here. These chargers all have the J1772, which is the industry, industry standard all electric vehicles sold in America today that aren't made by Tesla use that connector. So if I buy a Tesla, I can't use the open EVSE. No, yes, you can. With every Tesla, you get a adapter here. So this basically will plug into the connector on the open EVSE or any of these other chargers like this. And then it plugs into the car. As you can see, now it's the same as the Tesla connector. So. Don't worry, if you have a Tesla and you want to get an open EVSE, it will work with the supplied adapter. You don't have to buy anything extra. It comes with the car. As far as the connector and cable combination for the Tesla wall connector, if you buy a Tesla, it's a very good solution. Um, fact that you don't have to use the connector for everyday use and the cable is thin and not nice and bendable, the Tesla wall connector is probably a very good choice if you own a Tesla. If you don't own a Tesla, you do not want to buy the Tesla wall connector because then you would need to buy an adapter to use on your electric car. The other electric cars don't come with Tesla connector adapters like Tesla comes with the J1772 adapter. They do make them, but they cost about $200 and it's kind of a, a, a long dongle that it just adds complexity to your charging and you definitely don't want to do that. But for all EVs other than Teslas, any of these chargers like the open EVSC plugs directly into it. They all use the J1772 as we demonstrated here. All right, it's time for the cable deep freeze test. In this freezer, I placed the open EVSC last night about 14 hours ago. This is a commercial ice cream freezer. It gets really cold. What I'm gonna do now is pull the charger out, see how well the cable bends. I loop the cable around the charger very tightly in small loops. What I'm gonna do is try to unravel it and then roll it back up in large loops to simulate if the charger was outside at night, and it was in the winter, how easy it would be for you to manage that cable to plug the car in and then unplug it and holster the connector and store the cable. But first, let's see how cold it is in there. All right, negative 11.2 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 24 degrees Celsius. Pretty cold in there. All right, let's see how she does. Okay, first impressions are it's not doing that well. This cable here for the plug is really stiff. All right, so now let's take a look when we unravel. You could hear the cable cracking. All right. All right. All right. Not terrible, but not great. It is unraveling. So let's see. The goal is for me to be able to loop it back around here in nice long loops. Well, I'll use the cable connector there. All right. Yeah, and it's, it's fighting me. It's not terrible, but okay. See how it's very stiff? We're hoping that this would like flow and it's doing it a little bit now, but it's also warming up because I'm in, inside a warm garage. This is what you don't want to see, it holding the form of these small loops. All right, we've seen enough. 
not terrible, but definitely not as good as some of the better cables we've tested, like the ChargePoint Home Flex. I'd give this probably a D plus to C minus rating. It's definitely not going to get an extra point on the charger rater for having a very pliable and bendable cable in cold weather temperatures. To demonstrate just how compact the Open EVS is, I've lined up a few of the more popular charging stations available today from largest down to the Open EVSE. Now you might say, hey, the Tesla wall connector isn't the biggest, it shouldn't be on the end. Well, that's the only unit I have here that's actually hardwired, so I can't move it. If I could move it, it would be behind me here in between the Flow Home X5 and the Bosch Power Max 2. But you can see the Open EVSC is tiny. And just because it's small doesn't mean it's not powerful. As I mentioned, it can deliver up to 48 amps in a car, which is the most that any electric vehicle made today can accept. So you can't buy an EV today that can actually accept more power on level two charging than what the open EVSC can deliver. Now, it has a NEMA 4X outer casing, which is very good. That means it can actually take uh, the, uh, a direct hit from a hose and water will not make inside the enclosure. So this unit is fine to locate outside, even if you live in an area where you get blowing rainstorms or strong blowing snowstorms. NEMA 4X means the enclosure is very tight and you're not gonna have any intrusion inside that enclosure. You'll also notice that it's plastic and clear. You can look right into the unit. You can see the wires. There's an LED light inside that shines out. Um, kind of a cool feature. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the only unit that I know that you can actually look right into it. Um, pretty, pretty cool. It also has a digital display, which very few chargers today too. On that display, you can see real-time power draw in amps. You can also see the power delivered during this current charging session in watt hours, and also the cumulative power that the unit has delivered since you got it, and that's measured in kilowatt hours. It's a nice display. I like it. It's uh, definitely useful to at least see. Uh, for me, the more useful thing is to see the power, power draw. Um, I like to see a real-time power draw and not having to open up an app to, to look at that. I, I think it's definitely useful. Um, now, it is a smart charger, but it's not a conventional one. It doesn't, you don't download an app. Uh, what you do is when you um, uh, turn the unit on, you pair it with your Wi-Fi, and then you go to uh, uh, a private uh, IP address in your network, and there's like a portal where you can change the uh, power level. You can adjust the power level from, uh, to, so for delivery from six amps all the way up to the 48 amps. You can set schedules so that, you know, if you're on a time of use and you want the car to charge during a certain period of time, you can tell it to charge for a certain number of minutes. Uh, you could say charge for 65 minutes and then shut off. You can also tell it to charge to add a certain amount of kilowatt hours. Add 20 kilowatt hours. I don't know really why anybody would do that, uh, but you can do that with this charger. You can you can go in there and do that, but you do have to um, uh, go into the network to be able to switch that. You can't do that from the, the main display screen. It's not a touch screen. It just displays the amount of energy that it's given. Uh, it's a nice feature. Uh, the one downside is you don't get full uh, charging session statistics like you would with, say, the ChargePoint Home Flex or the NLX Juice Box. Those units give you robust reporting where you can look back and see how much energy you put in the car the last week, the last month, um, for a long period of time. You don't get that with Open EVSE, and I wish you did. But it does have other smart charging features that make it more convenient uh, to, to charge your car rather than having a quote unquote dumb charger that you just plug in and that's all it does is charge your car. The Open EVSC comes in a plug in unit only. You can, of course, remove the plug and hardwire it if you'd like. But one of the interesting things in it is it comes with a plug that you can use in either a NEMA 1430, a NEMA 1450, or a NEMA 1460 outlet. 
Very unusual. Um, they do that by removing the neutral pin in the plug. Now, no other charging station does this, uh, and I'm not sure that it would pass safety certification in doing that. Not saying it's not safe, uh, it's just that they're um, altering the plug. They do that because you can then use it in any outlet, an EMA 1430, an EMA 1450, or an EMA 1460. So this actually is a plug-in unit that can deliver up to 48 amps. There's no other units that are available today that offer a plug-in option for 48 amps. The Tesla wall connector I have over there is hardwired. The ChargePoint Home Flex that can deliver up to 50 amps, they require you to hardwire it if you're using more than 40 amps with the unit. Same thing with the NLX Juice Box. They give you a plug-in unit up to the 40 amp version. If you want the 48 amp version, then it has to be hardwired. But with the Open EVSE 48, you can install a NEMA 1460 outlet on a dedicated 60 amp circuit and plug this into it and it'll deliver 48 amps. It's time to offer our ratings for the Open EVSC 48. For that, we are going to go to our charger rater, point based charger rating system. Now, the charger rater is comprised of five specific categories cost and value, power and weatherproofing, construction and durability, smart or non smart, and safety certified and warranty. Each section the charger starts off with 15 points and then adds or loses points depending on its performance and features. First up is the cost and value category. The Open EVSC loses one point because it's $549. The way this works is we base our base charger price at $500. You lose a point for every $50 more then $500, you gain a point for every $50 less. Now that's a tough category because most chargers cost more than $500, but it's there for a reason. We want to put an emphasis on affordability. So the Open EVSC 48 loses one point in the first line item. Second point is value. The Open EVSC 48 gets two points because it gets an excellent value rating. For a 48 amp smart charger, $549 is very good. So Open EVSC 48 gets two points there, finishes up the cost and value category with 16 points. On to power and weatherproofing. It gets two points for power delivery. The way this basically works is we rate the chargers on a base 40 amp as being the baseline and that can deliver 10 kilowatts of power. Uh, if the charger can deliver more, basically it gains points. If it delivers less, it loses points. Since this is a 48 amp charger, it gains two points there. Is the power adjustable? Yes, it is. It gets a point. What's the NEMA rating? The Open EVSE is NEMA 4 rated, which is pretty much the best you can get with home charging equipment. It gets two extra points. Is it Energy Star certified? No, it is not. It does not get a point there. Does it do automatic restart? Yes, it does. That basically means if there's a power outage in the middle of a charging session, once power is restored, will the unit automatically start recharging the car? Yes, Open EVSC will. It gets an extra point. Finishes up the power and weatherproof rating category with a respectable 21 points. Next up is construction and durability. The first line item is connector holster. Open EVSC does not get or lose any points. I'm giving that remote connector holster. It has an average rating. It works. It's not great. It doesn't really add anything to the unit and it doesn't really detract. So it doesn't get any points there. Cable length. It gains one point there because it has a cable longer than 20 feet. The standard cable on the Open EVSC is 24 feet long. It's a very good cable and it's one of the longest cables available on the market today. Cable pliability, no points there. We give the charger a good rating. Uh, it was borderline on good and below average to be honest with you, but to be fair, it did bend a little bit better than some of the other cables we've tested. It does not get a point, does not lose a point. Robust construction, 
We give it an extra point. We give it an excellent score. Very well made, solid unit. And again, NEMA 4 rated, so the enclosure is very durable. Is it plug-in or hardwired? It is a plug-in unit, so it doesn't gain or lose points there. The only way uh, chargers can lose points in this category is if it's hardwired only. You can't gain any points on this line item. Next up, ease of installation. I showed you before how simple it was to install. It's four screws, you plug it in, it's done. You don't gain any points from that. These units should be easy to install. Finishes up the construction and durability category with 17 points. Next up is smart and non-smart. Is it a smart charger? Yes, it is. It gets five points. Is it power share capable? capable? Now this, is a, this was a tough call for me because the Open EVSC is power share capable. However, it doesn't come that way out of the box. It has to be con specially configured. So if you're a, a municipality, an apartment complex, and you need to string a bunch of them uh, together, they can configure it for you. But if you just order one online and you get it at your house, it will not power share with another Open EVSC. You can't share a single circuit. So we're not gonna give it the extra point there. If it was standard and it just arrived at your house that way, you'd, it would get an extra point. It does not, so it will get no points on that line item. Is it Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant compatible? No, the Open EVSA, although it's a smart charger, it doesn't communicate with Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. Does it have charging record data? It doesn't have extensive charging um, record data. It does not. Uh, unlike some of the other competing smart chargers, the Open EVSC does not store all individual past charging records. So you can't go back and look, oh, last Saturday I pulled uh, you know, 75 uh, kilowatt hours into the battery or, or whatever. It doesn't keep uh, as good a record as some of the competing units. So it doesn't get a point there. Is it demand response capable? Yes, it is. Open EVSC can participate in utility demand response programs, so it gets an extra point. Finishes up the smart, non-smart category with 21 points. Next up is safety, certified, and warranty. Now we need to have a little conversation here because on the first line, is it safety certified? No. The Open EVSC is not safety certified. It loses five points. That's a huge hit. We typically don't recommend chargers that aren't safety certified. We see a lot of equipment now coming over from Asia, very low quality, very inexpensive, not safety certified, the kind of stuff I wouldn't want in my garage, and that's the kind of the equipment we'd like people to avoid. Now, the Open EVSC is a different case here. All the components they use in this unit are UL components. It's just once they're put together, it's no longer considered UL certified. Well, it never was considered UL certified, but the individual items need to be safety certified all together as a, as a single unit in order to be UL listed. Open EVSC did not go through the expense of having this unit safety certified. I believe if they did, with a couple minor tweaks, it would be safety certified because I took a good hard look at it. I had a friend coming over who's an electrical engineer, took a look at it. It's a safe unit. It's been on the market for, for quite a few years now. They have had no problems that I'm aware of, but they haven't gone through the expense of getting the unit safety certified, which can be from tens of thousands of dollars to hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases. That's probably why this is such a good unit high powered with a lot of features at a low price because the company didn't have to bake into the price the cost of getting it safety certified. Now that's a consideration for many people. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even have reviewed the item if I didn't think it was uh, something that was safe and that you know people could use without concern. Uh, but it hasn't been UL listed, it's not safety certified and it's gonna lose five points in our charger rate of score for that. Um, next up is warranty. It has a three year warranty, so it gets two extra points. Finishes up the safety certified and warranty category with only 12 points, that hurt. The grand score on our charger rater for the Open EVSC 48 is 87 points. When you convert that to a five star rating, it gets 4.35 stars. Now we don't just 
rely on the charger rater. I then offer my own personal opinion of the charger because we can't always quantify how good a unit is with just a point-based system. My personal score is 4.55 stars out of five. And that's gonna give the Open EVSC 48 a final score of 4.45 stars out of five, a very respectable score for a good quality, high power home charger at a reasonable price. If you like what we're doing here on State of Charge, if you wanna watch some more charging station reviews that'll be coming up soon, make sure you click that subscribe button and tap the notification bell next to it. Thanks for watching.